Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to have a look at this model of the Sagmuller Clark 20 inch telescope at the University of Denver's Historic Chamberlain Observatory, Denver, Colorado. So uh, this is a wonderful scope with a fantastic Sagmuller mount and of course the impeccable Alvin Clark 20 inch objective. Um, this model is 1 20th so it's got about a 1 inch objective and everything is eh, pretty much to scale. I'm not, a, not perfect on everything on the scale here. There are a few things that are a little bit off but the idea here is to make a model of the Chamberlain Observatory Telescope that I had the privilege to operate many, many times over my career as an instructor for the University of Denver. And this, uh, this telescope, oh my God, it's a wonderful, wonderful telescope. Uh, idiosyncratic, I mean, it's uh, from the 1890s. <laughs> it certainly was a challenge to operate at times, especially when I got a bunch of students milling about. But it was, uh, it was uh, a, a great pleasure to operate this scope. Let me give you um, a little better look at how this thing works. I mean, it really, it's a functional telescope. One of the things about the models I make is that I like them to be functional. Maybe not great. <laughs> Let me show you where this telescope comes from. This <laughs> toy telescope, this vintage toy telescope, that's where the optics, <laughs> it's, it's laughable. It, it does produce an image, which is really all I'm looking for, is that it produces some sort of an image. So it is a working telescope. You can look through the eyepiece right here and, and see the moon. <laughs> Not very well, but it, you can see it. Anyway, so the idea is to have a working telescope. Um, I like to make my models from stock that I've already got. In other words, this, all these aluminum parts and metal parts and so forth, this is almost all aluminum, little stainless steel and steel and a little bit of plastic from the original telescope. But this is uh, it's all stuff that I had on hand laying around. So I just go into my machine shop and put this stuff together. Uh, let me show you how it works in terms of it's a functional equatorial mount so the mount actually does work it's even pretty well balanced although it's not perfect this little counterweight here that little thing is uh, stainless steel and I tried to balance it using that which is exactly like the real telescope works with the counterweight up there um, so I've got a friction clutch here and a friction clutch there. This is actually a setting circle on the real one. It's like six six feet in diameter. Anyway, it's uh, that's that's how it works. That's what it is. And the the counterweight here. This is also stainless steel. Almost everything else is aluminum, polished aluminum. So I'll give you some close-ups. And I'll also, also show you what it looks like when I take this apart. I do not like to use glue. Uh, I, I, re, I don't refuse. I mean, I, I'm not absolutely against it. But I prefer to have something that's made of metal, assembled with bolts and screws and nuts and that sort of thing. So um, it, it's a bit more, it's not so much a model as a sort of a working, working semi-replica of some sort. I'm not sure what you would call it. So let's take some close-ups and I'll take it apart and show you how it goes together. This little device, and it's not little in real life, that device is uh, RA and deck setting circles. Uh, it's only one set of them, the telescope has several. 
But there's a, a couple of dials there. You turn these, these in real life actually turn the telescope in RA and DEC. And you can use that to set the scope at least approximately. In real life, inside this box here, these are windows, and inside the box there is a mechanical governor that originally would have controlled the um, falling weights that drove the telescope in right ascension. And back in the 1950s, I believe, it was uh, mechanized, an electric motor was put in, but it still spins, so the crowd gets a little bit of a little bit of a treat to watch that thing still turning this finder by the way is a piece of a uh, little piece of tube so it's uh, it's actually a usable peep scope finder okay now you get to watch me take this apart all I'm going to need is this little Allen wrench right here. First we remove the OTA. That comes off like that. Here's the mini gears on this thing. that this is just threaded on here it was some fun making those I've got a rotating table on my milling machine that was uh, somewhat challenging which is the fun part of it so now we've got this okay that and this comes up This is just several little pieces, like so this part here was also kind of a fun challenge to make. You might be interested to see how this works. I try not to have too many exposed screws and bolts and things, and of course you can't avoid it sometimes. That's the reason why I made these the way I made them. I think you might be amused to see this. The way I hold this on here, it's just friction. So when I pull this off, that comes off with it. It's just friction. These guys here. Oops. So that this next step might shock you a little bit. Oh, I'm gonna need a screwdriver, I forgot. I'll go get my I have to get a big screwdriver. Okay, that is not one piece, that's actually several small pieces. This one, surprisingly enough, is actually three pieces. So, okay, this piece is, uh, this piece was hard to machine, as you can imagine, but it's mostly machined. There was a little bit of file work, cleanup and stuff, but it was mostly machined to be of that form. It was a real tricky proposition to do that. Uh, this, there are three, no, two uh, quarter inch 20 bolts in there holding that on. Go all over the place. Like that. There you got those little pieces there. A couple of bolts. This is trapped here. And this holds these pieces, which are effectively, I mean I could have done that with a couple of nuts, but I wanted it to look nicer, so I made some 
I don't want the obvious nuts if I can avoid it, nuts and screws and so forth. So um, that's the reason I made that, that way. And then this sits on top like so. Okay, let's see if I can get this back together. Voila, there it is. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at this model or semi-replica of the Alvin Clark Sagmuller telescope, 20-inch telescope at Chamberlain Observatory. Thank you very much for watching.